is uh, Seth Abramson, the uh, author of Proof of Collusion, How Trump Betrayed America. Just an absolutely extraordinary book. Seth, welcome back to the program. Thank you for having me, Tom. It's great having you on. You, you have produced a masterpiece, and it's going to be fascinating when Mueller's report finally comes out to uh, do a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, give us a, a, a summary of uh, you know, what you learned, and uh, I know you've been do, researching this forever, uh, you know, what you learned, what brought you to write this book, and, and what people will learn from reading the book. So what the book is, just so people know, is a curation of hundreds of major media investigative reports from around the world uh, dating back to the 1980s. And that curation puts all of those reports into a single narrative so we can see the whole timeline dating back 30 years of Trump-Russia collusion. And one of the things that you discover when you look at that timeline is that it's clear that there is a quid pro quo relationship between the Trumps and the Trump Organization and Russian businessmen and oligarchs, and ultimately oligarchs who are agents of the Kremlin, to receive hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, to the Trump Organization through, in some cases, clandestine, in some cases, hidden through shell company, in some cases, open deals with the Trump Organization. And in exchange for all of that money, all of that largesse, what the Kremlin received was a presidential candidate with a historically pro-Russia foreign policy that stood to gain the Kremlin trillions of dollars over the next decade and have no positive benefit whatsoever for the United States. So despite Donald Trump's claims of no ties to Russia, of having no indebtedness to the Russians and having a foreign policy that merely came from his own uh, illumination as to what was appropriate for geopolitics, in fact, there appears to be a, a quid pro quo. Yeah. Now, I mean, this is, uh, if you look back on American politics, you know, John Adams after the XYZ affair, when he ran against Thomas Jefferson in the election of 1800, was referring back to the to the uh, the purported attempt to by the by French officials to bribe three Americans um, to operate against American interests, and he basically accused Jefferson of, of colluding with France, of, you know, colluding with a foreign power. Uh, the American people didn't buy it, and Jefferson won the election. But um, this idea that and, and and frankly, I think that was the last time before Trump that there was. Even the argument, the suggestion that somebody running for president was influenced by or under the influence of a foreign power. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, but uh, to what? Uh, so, you, you know, you could argue that this is bad politically. You could argue that this is even treason. Uh, is this illegal? Well, let me say this. When, when you say treason, I think we could say that there is a small T, meaning a non-statutory treason, in the sense that this is treacherous or traitorous behavior that is clearly not patriotic or in the best interests of the United States. But there is also criminal behavior here. The Trump-Russia investigation ultimately is not a collusion case, capital C, because, of course, collusion is only a federal crime in the context of antitrust law. But collusion, small c, just the lay term, meaning a clandestine agreement between two parties that is some sort of a transgression and therefore must be clandestine. That's a conspiracy, uh, right? Underneath, well, underneath that umbrella, you do have conspiracy, but you have several dozen other federal statutes. So I think that what we will ultimately learn and what proof of collusion, I think, makes pretty clear is that we have here a bribery case, which is, of course, a federal crime. We have a conspiracy regarding computer crimes. We have aiding and abetting. We have money laundering. We have Foreign Agent Registration Act violations, possible RICO violations, illegal solicitation of uh, foreign donations, wire fraud, bank fraud, and then, of course, the whole second half of the investigation, which is crimes after the fact, such as obstruction, witness tampering, perjury, lying to Congress, making false statements, falsification on federal forms, and so on. So, yes, this is, in fact, a criminal case, as well as small t treachery against the United States. We're talking to Seth, Seth Abramson, the uh, author of Proof of Collusion, How Trump Betrayed America. Seth, uh, Seth is a former criminal defense attorney and criminal investigator. He teaches digital journalism, legal advocacy, and cultural theory now at the University of New Hampshire and uh, the columnist for Newsweek. Um, Seth Abramson, A-B-R-A-M-S-O-N dot net is, is the website, and you can tweet him at Seth Abramson. And I have retweeted so many of your tweets over the over the last year or so, Seth, uh, as you've been uh, obviously working on this book and doing this research. Um, does your, do you believe that your book makes a strong enough case? Um, you know, there was a book that came out back in 2005 or thereabouts 
uh, by uh, Vince Bugliosi titled, uh, titled the, uh, the Case for the Impeachment of George W. Bush, and, or words to that effect. And, and, and he believed, he asserted on this program, in fact, several times, that his book actually detailed from public records factual information that was, uh, you know, that, that indicated crimes committed by George W. Bush, mostly around the Iraq war, um, and, and, that, and that he could be prosecuted for those. Um, you know, he, he, he passed away, unfortunately, and, and, you know, nobody ever prosecuted George Bush. But do you believe that just with what's in your book, if, if Robert Mueller had never existed, with what's in your book, is there enough to uh, both impeach and prosecute uh, Donald Trump or the, the entire Trump crime family? Well, let me say that, like Bugliosi's book, uh, my book is a public records book. So everything, uh, virtually everything, 99% of what's in the book uh, is simply taken from investigative reports that have been published by reliable media outlets. Um, in terms of impeachment, as you know, Tom, it's a political process rather than, strictly speaking, a legal process. I think we already have impeachable offenses in the case of Donald Trump simply by looking at emoluments and the emoluments clause of the Constitution, which, of course, is not really covered in this book, but that's a separate topic. But we do also have impeachable offenses in the nature of obstruction, obstruction of justice, which is covered in this book. And I do think the book in and of itself and the public information that we have is sufficient to say that the president obstructed justice. Now, in terms of what's in the book on the collusion question, a lot of people want the sort of Hollywood collusion moments where you open a door and Donald Trump is sitting at a computer hacking the DOD with Vladimir Putin on his lap. Unfortunately, that's not the reality of legal cases in the United States. It's not the reality of this case, which is the most far-ranging, complex federal criminal investigation of our lifetimes. But what you do have in this book is sufficient information that if you put it before a jury, and the information in this book is information that's testimonial, documentary, that could be admitted in court, if you put that information in front of a jury, it would blow their hair back. And yes, they would believe that crimes had been committed here, and those crimes would be of an impeachable nature. Having said that, as you know, Tom, the general legal opinion is that you cannot indict and try in court a sitting president, or at best, you could maybe indict them and not try them. So I don't think we'll see a criminal prosecution of Donald Trump while he's in office, but I do think that we will sometime in 2019 see the beginning of an impeachment process. As a result of your research and your publication of this book, Seth, have any state attorneys general reached out to you or any, any federal officials or people who may be federal officials in a Democratic administration reached out to you about um, you know, collaborating or using your research for that kind of a purpose? Well, I can say that in general terms, Tom, in the two years that I've been doing this research, I started in December 2016, that a lot of people, um, both in and out of government, have reached out to me. A lot of people in government, but also people out of government, I should say, who are in journalism, for instance, mm -hmm. in major media, who have reached out to me. Uh, I think that I don't want to give the impression that Robert Mueller doesn't have the information that's in this book. I believe that Robert Mueller does have the information that's in this book, but many uh, of those in the American public do not because Robert Mueller so far has run a pretty tight ship. There hasn't been a lot of leaks uh, since he began his investigation in 2017. But I would also say that Robert Mueller has many times more than uh, what I have in this book, even though, as I said, what I have in this book, I do think is substantial enough for criminal prosecution. And by the way, I want to emphasize, we're not just talking about Donald Trump here. We're talking about 10 to 20 individuals, including family members of Donald Trump, who have criminal liability as we're seeing with the report saying that Donald Trump Jr. may well soon be indicted. But Robert Mueller has what's in the book, even though the American people in many cases have not seen it because it's reporting from all around the world. And Robert Mueller has much more than that. Uh, so I think that we can expect not a report as soon as people are suggesting, but within the next few months. That's, that's fascinating. Seth, uh, Seth Abramson, the book Proof of Collusion, How Trump Betrayed America. Seth, you're, you're doing great work here. Thanks so much for dropping by today and for writing this book. Thank you for having me. And I, I recommend it to anybody who wants to know what, what the hell is actually going on with this with this man uh, this, this this man in the White House. We'll be right back. <laughs>